Technology is everywhere. And I believe that to design technology, it's really important to explore more and more our humanity, our emotions, our feelings, our culture, our society. And as a designer, I think that we have to put again the human at the center of the design process. Starting from the functional needs, we can say the obvious, obvious one, but then going down and down and searching for the more latent and tacit ones. But let's start from a fact. Disability is often perceived as a concrete form of otherness. The disabled people perceive themselves as something else, mutilated in relation to a star standard. And this kind of prosthesis, prosthesis in general, I think that are really, really an active element, a relational element. I would like to call them as actants. And as actants, as active elements, there is this anthropologist Miller that says that we shape things while sh things are shaping us. And so, um, yes, prosthesis can really influence the way that users perceive themselves and the way that society sees people with disability using prosthesis. There are different kinds of interactions between people, users, and artifacts, also prosthesis. A lower, at the lower level of this pyramid, we can say this physical and sensory interaction. But going up, we find the cognitive and informational one. Going more and more up, we find the emotional and the cultural one. By living this kind of experience, experiences our products, all together, we are not really able to differentiate different level, but we live a uniform experience. And the lower level influence the higher one. How? We influence also usability and pleasantness by choosing single design elements, by choosing the finishing, for example, the colors, materials, temperature, density, skin, and so on. So, as this Andres Vanong, a designer, a Dutch designer says, a sign, a design sign, doesn't refer manifestly only to itself, but it constitutes an emotion forecast. Yes, I believe that designing prosthesis, we really are designing the emotion. Emotion that users are going to feel and also the people, the observers, are going to feel. But I want to give you two examples. This is a kind of uh, prosthesis, a passive aesthetic one, who has the skin, the texture of the skin, nails, all the little details, the mimetic, I, I call them mimetic aspects. And then, on the other hand, we have this, is a nook, is a metallic hook that really loses all the human aspects. Well, let's start from the first one, this one. This one in literature is described as a defensive behavior. And yes, it is, I confirm. During my youth, I really uh, used this kind of prosthesis to hide myself, not to be noticed, just to feel my, my body to make it more symmetrical and not to be really noticed. But if there is a single little creepy detail, the observer, the people, the person that we have in front of us, just uh, find that this end is not natural, is not real, is a prosthesis. And they fall down in this uncanny valley, as Maury called it. And yes, I can say that I really recognized in each person I met in my life this moment. It's a strange feeling of alienation. And this kind of unnatural movements really worsen these feelings. We can see the dot line. So people really fell more and more down in the uncanny valley. Yes, it's really creepy. I don't know if you can just feel the sound of the motor. And 
well, yes, this kind of technical elements are uh, the one I was saying to you. So te a technical element, the noise of the motor, just become a social element. Imagine to be in a silent room, like a study room, an elevator, a taxi, and then I move my hand. And the man, the man, the hand just make this creepy noise. Well, people <laughs> around me just start wondering what the hell is going on, what, what this, this, this noise. And at this point, I have no choice. I feel I have to justify myself, just to say, okay, no, it's just my prosthesis, but it's all okay, nothing gets me, it's happening. Let's move on. Let's move on in this kind of end. It's really the opposite. It's just an hook, a metallic cold hook that has no motor, but it's really, he's able to scream his presence. It's impossible to hide with this, with this kind of prosthesis. And it's also so weird that people, the observers, the society, could really feel has a menacing prosthesis. Yes, because this kind of prosthesis could have more, more capabilities than the standard, the humans. And so, what do we think looking at this? But I always think immediately at Captain Hook, yes. And it's the negative example, it's not actually positive. So there is a social negative perception. And there is a psychologist, a Swiss psychologist, Bertolt Meyer, who describes this kind of uh, feeling as an evil cyborg. So people, just feel a person with disability wearing innovative prosthesis, technological, high technological prosthesis, has a negative perception, has an evil cyborg, so it's negative. But I'm not talking to you about sci-fi futures because a decade ago, 10 years ago, the, Paralympics, the Paralympics in London started to talk about superhumans, so it's a, in a positive way, not negative. So from evil cyborg to superhumans, and in my life, during my life, I can assure you that I see the perception, the social perception changing from a stereotyped social group seen with pity and compassion to superhumans. But I really lived my youth as a normal person in a normal uh, family, and I hope that really all of us could live our diversity in a normal way. But now I would like to present the most human hand I have ever met, and it's inspired by soft robotics and has been developed in the labs at Istituto Italiano di Tecnologia. And we can see how different it is from the one we have seen before. So it's really inspired by the way our brain functions and our natural movements. And we can see, I can just grasp these objects, how it's different from this kind of prosthesis, this rigid finger, while these are so smooth and so natural. The way I control the prosthesis is exactly the same, but the, we call it embodied in intelligence in the finger, it's completely, give a user experience completely different. And also the social and the self-interaction are really different. And I would like to handshake all of your hands to just let feel you what does it mean wearing this kind of prosthesis. And, but then I stop really, and I would like to say goodbye to you with this photo. And it's me and my sisters, and I'm really giving a hug to her without any prosthesis, without any end. Because at the end, the real way to remain human, it's our empathy, the way we relate with others with empathy.